An arts program of any kind truly flourishes when it is embedded in and collaborates with community. Shifts within the contemporary art world, some precipitated by funding sources, starting with CETA under the Carter administration to more recent organizations like Blade of Grass, who fund artists to do community-based projects, have slowly initiated changes in art education. This major shift within the art world was partly catalyzed by artist projects that responded to the stories and values being promoted by a wide variety of grassroots movements. Our arts program at UWT is strongly influenced by this national and international sea change towards a more community-engaged focus. Over the past 14 years, the teaching artists on our faculty have been facilitating a unique, interdisciplinary, socially engaged studio arts curriculum. My book, Arts for Change, Teaching Outside the Frame, documents what it means to teach in this way. It is now in its fourth printing and being used by teaching artists around the world. In 2016, after I moved to Tacoma, I felt it was time to have a coming out party to fully introduce the Tacoma community to what we have to offer as an arts program. With funding from IAS and a wide network of community partners, we co-created the Art Slam Slide, a free night of two-minute performances, readings and slide talks, and a day of free art workshops. We called our program Art Building Community. A church becomes an art cauldron. And for those of you who don't know, the Whitney is a church on the corner of 19th and Fawcett. We invited students, faculty from all disciplines, alumni and community artists, performers and curators to participate. You can start. In these slides, you will see some of the 30 participants and facilitators in both the Art Slam slide and the Saturday's workshop. In this slide, um, and I should mention the slides were taken by our Fulbright artist, Antonio Garcia Cano, who is here in the audience. Um, you will see various members of the crew. That was Gabriel Brown sharing his Mandala project. He's the program director for Spaceworks Gallery. And here's a shot of the audience, very wrapped in attention. Um, the room was decorated with student art. The faculty worked hard to make it a beautiful space, and they were able to enjoy tasty treats from a Tacoma caterer. Um, the culture shock collective, um, which should be in the next slide, um, is a wonderful new collective, two co Tacoma curators, both of Filipina heritage, um, and they're describing here an exhibition they've curated that features local artists of color. This is a current student, Shane Augustine, who is describing uh, one of her installation pieces. And many students brought some of their current work to share, and it was very exciting to see. Um, this is work, two different pieces, by an award-winning Seattle artist who does primarily community-based art. The piece on the top is a work um, about domestic violence that she's been doing with survivors. The work on the bottom is a project she's done with hom the homeless. Here is Cecilia Leon reading one of her current works in progress. She's a Seattle artist, and one of our students, Nathan Barlow, is sharing slides of his work. Here we, we see Christopher Paul Jordan, the Tacoma Artist of the Year, presenting slides of his different projects. He's an amazing painter and spoken word artist, and one of the great networkers in town. Here's one of our students, Jordan Timmers, who's an amazing dancer, dancing for us. So we didn't restrict what art form students brought to the event because we're an arts program. Everything gets to be there. 
here's the crowd continuing to be in rapt attention and a profile of our Fulbright artist from Spain, Antonio. <laughs> he's here for another five months and if you are looking for a great bridge person, he's that person. Here's another one of our dancers, John Fon, who um, really wowed the crowd with his break dancing. And here is yours truly. I created a new piece for the gathering. It was very inspiring to do that. It's a, a slide text piece called Wrestling with the Uneasy Present, which is something many people can identify with these days. Here are two of our part-time faculty, Vaughn Bell and Elizabeth Connor, and they are doing a project um, in 3D drawing. It's a workshop that they did on the Saturday following the Art Slam. Here is the poetry, and there was a workshop <laughs> that was led by Ed Chamberlain and Jacob Martins, our both, both UW faculty, and this audience participatory installation is still in place. Here on the left is a workshop in cultural identity and mask making that was facilitated by Jewel Castro and Tyler Budge, both arts faculty, and Antonia and myself waiting for participants in our eco art project. Um, this is a group debriefing the Arts Collective Artifacts from Seattle, are leading a performance workshop on race and inclusion, and it was a pretty exciting group. Um, and here's another performance workshop that was led by psychology professor Tony Perone and David Kuhn in communications along with several graduate students. And they were exhibiting play, how performance can be playful. We are working on an eco art project across from the Whitney, and some of you probably passed it. It's called Navigating the Flood. And on the day of workshops, Antonio and Jacob worked with one of the eco-art students. And this is the initial phase, the first draft of the project. It's now um, doing a lot more in terms of holding the water on that hill rather than it going into the street. And um, here is our last slide, and it's one of Antonio's pieces. Um, discussing the ecological impacts of, of the changing pathways of rivers. And this is in Spain, in Murcia, Spain, his hometown. Um, all in all, it was a very successful experience for all involved, and several faculty have now applied for funds to have a similar art event annually. We are hopeful that with our new arts and community major, that we will do even more to build bridges in the community. Thank you. Yeah, Antonia is going to come up to field questions with me. So, and I want to mention that Antonio has been doing an amazing job working with faculty, not only on our campus but in Seattle and with students. He's our second Fulbright artist, and um, I wish we could have one every year of his quality because the amount of bridging that happens between disciplines when you have an eco-artist here or any socially engaged artist is remarkable. He's a superb example of that bridge. <laughs> any questions for us? Yeah. Are you, um, in the, how are you engaging um, other students that are maybe don't, aren't in the arts? All of our students primarily are from other majors. Okay. They're required to take our classes as VLPA. Um, and um, they are all taking course, the, our various classes and making art based on their own stories or their own expressive feelings. So it's um, almost like facilita facilitating a community-based art project every 10 weeks because I would say 70% of them are beginners to art and they have never even been in museums in some cases. So we get to be their first taste of what art can be and that it's socially engaged and also beautiful is wonderful for us. You know, that students learn about aesthetics and visual grammar at the same time they learn how to tell a story in a compelling way. And it's great to work with this diverse population. 
many students come into our classes and say, I'm not creative. I don't know how to draw. Why didn't, you know, I'm, I'm going to fail this class, you know, those kinds of things. And you say, give me a chance because I'm going to find the artist inside you. We believe in cultural democracy in our classes. <laughs> Everybody gets to have a voice. So, did I answer your question? Um, I'm just wondering if students that aren't involved in art class are able to come to these things? This arts event was open to everyone. And since the election, because students have been dealing with so much stress, I have been occasionally opening up the art building when the building is not being used for classes to just have art sessions so that people can process what they're going through. And we've had very successful ones. I announced them on Facebook and we've had over 40 people come and, and make posters, make postcards, um, and just talk about how to make community engaged projects that talk about what people are going through, how to bridge polarized conversations with art. It's a really important thing to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah.